Well, what's up you guys? What's going on? It's your girl baby back again. And I am talking today about anger and rage and how surrendering your life to Christ, at least my life to Christ, has changed me on my journey to finding peace, balance and equilibrium. Because oftentimes when we are light workers, which we all are, uh, we oftentimes come across people who want to bring us out of our element, right? We've all experienced it. The raggedy ass driver who cut you off in traffic or the rude ass barista at Starbucks who clearly does not like her job, although she clocks in every day. Those people, the complainers or the people that are just trying to ruin your day because theirs is all fucked up. I'm talking about them. This bud is for them and this bud is for you because I know that a lot of you guys are often taken out of your element and you just don't know why or you are feeling like it is like your curse. I used to feel cursed by this uh, plague of just ignorant ass people wanting to upset me or ruin my day. It never failed, never failed, never failed. I had a teacher in the sixth grade that was trying to ruin my day at all times. Her name was Miss D and Miss D stood for dum dum, but really it didn't. It stood for her actual last name, but we won't disclose her last name here. However, uh, this person would oftentimes, like daily, try to disrupt my own peace, balance, and equilibrium. All the children looked up to me because I am a light worker and I am to be admired because I love God. And when God be for you and God be within you, everyone notices around you. And so there's a passage in the Bible that talks about how when God lives through you, when people reject you, it's not necessarily a rejection of you as a person. It's a rejection of, of this person or them towards God and, and what God has done in your life and what he could do for them too, but they just don't believe it right so it started out when i was much much younger than i am right now okay i'm no spring chicken but i'm also not no old ass hen about to be put out to be turned into k a fucking c i am absolutely somebody who you know loves the lord i love myself and i flash a big pretty smile for people i am very helpful i'm very accommodating and that is truly the essence of the living god god is love and you treat people the way that you're meant to be treated and so i always walk out into the world in that energy but again like i said people would always try to just get underneath my skin and i always had this reactive tendency i learned it when i was younger and i learned to pop off and react and respond to every you know negative situation that was put in my way and so if someone wanted to ruin my day you better believe i would ruin the fuck out of theirs i, I really would i was somebody who's always been extraordinarily intuitive and I would read you for filth and I would do it in a very unethical sort of way. So let's just say that it wasn't really unethical, but, you know, uh, I once had a person, you know, come at me in that sort of way. And when I responded back, it was something along the lines of you're just mad because, you know, your mother is dead and you have not dealt with that, uh, you know, pent up energy. So maybe you should work on that instead of trying to fuck with me. And that person's eyes dropped, their soul hurt. And I could tell that I really hurt their feelings which is what I wanted, <laughs> and which is what I wanted. But then I began to realize like, you know, they already know what, what's hurting them. They already know that their life is in shambles. They already know that they miss that person that they are probably grieving over, which is why they're trying to gain some sort of engagement out of me. But it's really up to me to be the higher person or, the, or on a higher vibrational level. You know, when they go low, we go high. And so as you guys already know, especially from my last video, and if you follow me on Instagram, which you should, Instagram at snarky black girl, girl with a U, not with an I, and that's on Twitter, that's on Facebook, that's everywhere. But I um, encountered this issue with my daughter and her father, and my daughter had been asking me to get her ears pierced up here for the longest time and I figured she'd just go get it when she's 18 no ma'am you can't go get your ears pierced I'm not going to go take you to do that because you know yes it's self-expression but really it's an expression of your boredom what can you do to constructively channel that energy into something that would be more productive that's my thought process behind it and then when you turn 18 and you don't need my permission to live your life then you can just go get it done girl like you ain't got to we ain't got to go do all that 
that's the way I look at things. I don't care if you get a tattoo or not. That's what, you know, that's what being 18 is for. You can make those own decisions. But if you need to ask me to do something to alter your body, then no, you know, wait until you don't need somebody else's permission. So uh, my dad, my daughter's dad came into town and I haven't seen him in 14 years. Before he came into town, of course, this nigga was, you know, <laughs> whistling Dixie, trying to get back in, trying to get in where he fits in. But I knew that my daughter wanted to go down there for, you know, when she graduated. So I was like, well, no, you know, you know, what? make sure that when he comes out here, bring your girlfriend with you because I want to meet her too. And so they came out, you know, it was him, his girl, or just in his family. And uh, I gave them the weekend that my daughter graduated because I knew that, you know, I didn't really necessarily have much planned. I didn't really feel like going on a big vacation at that point in time because really I'm still tired. She just graduated. And really it's about getting acclimated to this new way of life. So I just kind of like gave him that weekend so that I could decompress and have some time to myself. But when he got out here, I could, I noticed and I could tell that he was in this like vibrational energy to where he was trying to get my attention. You know, I could tell, you know, he, he'd stand behind the girl and he'd be looking, you know, from person to person trying to get my attention or just like making faces towards them. I ignored it because while, you know, again, I put on my Jesus hat. I, I knew already when he was coming out here, I needed my Jesus hat. So I put it on. It's a fitted cap. And I had it. I had it nice and tight in the back. So I just ignored it. I gave him his compliments. He looked decent. So, you know, he looked like he was happier than he had been in years. Or he just looked like he was doing a little bit better for himself, going to work every day, dressing up nicely, and potentially, you know, taking care of himself as far as like not smoking, drinking, and overindulging in, uh, you know, the negative aspects as to what broke our relationship up. But I digress. Um, and so I let that slide. And then we went to graduation. I didn't actually see him at the graduation at all. So I don't know if he got there afterwards and started acting like, oh, we were in there, but we just didn't see you. I don't know. That's not up for me to, to that's not up for me to explain or to explain away. That's up for him. So he said he was there. I didn't really care. I just let it be because I was still observing this person. God put it on my heart to simply observe. You know, that was the purpose in that. And, um, you know, again, I let my daughter go over there. I let her just have her, her weekend with him because that was her graduation. She hadn't seen him in a long time. And, you know, that's what coming back into communication with your family is for. And so, uh, you know, the day after graduation, I didn't see my daughter, but I posted on my socials as usual, because as y'all know, I'm on my journey. Baby girl is a pop star. Okay. A star in the making stream. My new singles, Uzi and Uzi Extendo be on the lookout because my mixtape is dropping here very soon. And my album is coming out after that anyways. And so I just kind of like allowed, I just allowed, I simply allowed because a part of putting on your Jesus hat is to surrender to the things that are going on around you. God places certain tests in your way and in your life in order to see how you're going to respond in that moment. For example, when uh, Jacob in the Bible stole Esau's blessing, he thought for sure his brother Esau was going to murder him in Genesis. And what ended up happening was, is that Esau, when he finally saw Jacob again, Jacob had been on the run for, I want to say 14 or 15 years. He had married two different women. His father-in-law promised him that he was going to marry one woman and then he tricked Jacob. So the same way that Jacob tricked his brother into doing something that was just nefarious, his father-in-law tricked him as well. So God got Jacob back. Esau didn't have to do anything, but Jacob was still afraid that Esau wanted to murder him. And so after all the trials and tribulations Jacob went through, he ended up having a whole bunch of babies with this one woman that he didn't love. She wasn't pretty. She was depressed. She was lethargic and she was the ugly sister. Okay. And then he had actually fallen in love in love with the other sister. But once again, his father, his, his father-in-law Laban tricked him into marrying the ugly sister first so he could marry off both his daughters and get them taken care of. And then after all of that, after Laban, his uh, father-in-law tricked him and did all those really nasty things to Jacob. He asked Jacob to stay on. He wanted to keep Jacob there as a slave because Jacob, he realized that the reason why Laban was so blessed was because he had Jacob on his team. And he recognized that once Jacob left, that the blessing would be gone. There would no, be no other blessing on his life. 
And so Jacob left anyway. And so he was still afraid that his father-in-law would kill him as well. But he also was still afraid that his brother Esau would be angry because again, Jacob stole Esau's blessing. And so, you know, Jacob went through all of that with all that fear in his heart. And when he finally came back across Esau, Esau gave him the biggest hug, welcomed, into, welcomed, him, welcomed him into the land. And Jacob ended up being able to share in the riches with his brother. And there was no beef. There was no heartache or whatever. And so... You know, again, so I, I know that. I know that fear has no place in this. I know that, you know, when you do something wrong, you know, what the devil meant for bad, God meant for good, and God can make this right. And so, um, again, my, my child's father came into town, and it's one of those things where, you know, you try to forgive, you try to forget, but I know that he knows that at one point he stole my blessing or he tried to steal my blessing. And I know that he knows or he thinks that he needs to make up for all these things, but he, at the same time, he's still doing the wrong thing. He's still doing the wrong thing. He's still trying to be uh, dishonest instead of being honest with his feelings. And that's not for me to navigate or negotiate. I'm not going to go out of my way to figure out why you lying still. I'm not going to go out of my way to figure out why you got this girl on your team that you don't really want, but you over here trying to make her jealous of me. I'm not going to do all that. All I'm going to do is smile and dial. Okay, smile and sit there and be my heavenly self because God told me to. I had my Jesus hat on. And so I noticed once again that that shit was getting on my motherfucking nerves. It really was. He was on my nerves the whole weekend because that's just what raggedy ass niggas do. And I treated him with respect, with honor, and with joy the whole time because God told me to. Why not? First of all, God didn't have to tell me to do that. I treat niggas the way that I would want to be treated because that's a universal law of love. That's number one. But I began to really surrender because the old me, I haven't talked to him in four, over 14 years. I ain't seen him in over 14 years. I have no desire to talk to him or see him. Only reason I do is because old girl back there. And so I gave him that opportunity to, you know, be this person that he should have always been, which is a father. You ain't got to be my baby daddy, but you got to be her father. There's that part. And so as the weekend went on, I was working. I didn't see them uh you know, my grad, my daughter graduated on Thursday. I didn't see them on Friday. And then I had an invitation to come over on, on Friday or, or on Saturday to, you know, swim in the pool and do all these extra activities with them. And so I knew my daughter wanted me there. So I went. And when I got there, everyone had this weird energy of, I could see his sister looking at me out the corner of her eye you know, uh, with the, with the ridiculous kind of smile on her face. And I already knew also that I never really got along with his sister. She was someone who also, again, if he was trying to, trying to get under my skin, she also tried to get under my skin. You know, I remember one time we were out just, um, in South, when I lived in South Carolina and she had, uh, someone who, you know, was doing, let's just say she was doing some work for her. And the woman walked up and saw me and said, you are so pretty. And I was like, you know, thank you. And his sister said, oh, no, she's not. Like she was guising it as, as a joke, but she was really serious. And so I always knew that there was something there. She never wanted to have, be outshined. She always wanted to be the pretty person. And she always wanted to be extra important, which I let her be because some people just need that, whatever. But so I could tell that there was something going on there. But when I saw my daughter, she also had a ridiculous look on her face. And I was like, why are you acting all weird? Like, why don't you just come out and say it? And when my daughter showed me that she had these tattoos behind her ear, and then I didn't even see the piercings. She showed me, she showed me this tattoo on her face or on the back of her neck. And I was like, oh, somebody want me to take off my Jesus hat. Now, don't they? But in that moment, God said, maintain your peace maintain your equilibrium there's nothing that you can do about the situation in this moment so what's the point in getting mad and so i didn't get mad i just sat there for a moment and i just looked around at the quality of the lives of the people that sat there that were trying to bring me out of my element and i realized in that moment that they're just sad people trying to find something to use to bring entertainment to their lives because things are probably really boring for them or just whatever they never learned how to live in the love of what god has for them and so as i sat there it almost made me sad and you know if you know me then you know me you know i don't really like being around a lot of sadness or people that are wanting to pour their sadness onto me 
which is one of the reasons I don't necessarily do readings anymore. I will read you, but I won't read people that just want to complain and just want to be sad and that don't necessarily really want to change their lives. You know, I so I live probably about a five minute walk from the place where I know I could probably make a thousand dollars a week, if not more than that, just doing readings for people. But I could probably make more than a thousand dollars a week. Actually, I think one day I made a thousand dollars in one day. So there's that part. Um, but I, that's a little bit of a cap on my rap. I made five hundred dollars in a day. But anyways, I was sitting there uh, and I was like, you know, one reason I'd never go back into that particular situation is because I don't want to just sit there and listen to people complain. I don't want to lie to you and, and comfort your soul. And I'm I'm a light worker. Like, I'm not here to play foo-foo games with you. I'm here to help you fix your life. And if you don't really want to fix your life, then go get a reading from somebody else. Or stop complaining, baby. Because if you're not going to fix it, then I'm not going to try to go out of my way. You get it. And so as I was sitting here in that moment and I was watching these people just get extra overly upset at the fact that I wasn't mad, I realized in that moment that they caused themselves the greatest detriment of all. They caused themselves the greatest grief of all. They caused themselves their own greatest heartache because really what they did was a failure to them. It made, and I could tell that it made them feel inferior or it made them feel, I can't even articulate it. Have you ever seen somebody just deflate before your very eyes and you could just see that they, that no matter what they did, they realized that no matter what they did, they would never be that proverbial good enough. And it's almost like no one ever said that you weren't good enough. No one ever said that God wouldn't bless you, but you're doing things to derail your own blessing. Okay. Cause the God I serve is going to protect me and protect mine. You know, she got a little tattoo behind her ear. As long as the motherfucker don't fall off, then I guess this is okay. She's going to have it for the rest of her life. And then that's just going to be that. But at the same time, I realized also, you know, you're also at the same time, using a child as a pawn, a child of God, because I mean, yeah, she's my kid, but she belongs to God. You're using this child of God as a pawn in a game that nobody but you is playing. And that again, made me almost feel sad for them. Like it made me sad. And so I sat there and when I got back to my house, God still had me in peace and I was okay with that. And then on probably Sunday, I realized that the peace was no longer there. I no longer have to maintain this level of peace because I'm no longer in that situation to where I could swing on somebody or just whatever. You never know because things get escalated when people harm your child. But again, the child don't belong to me. She belonged to God. So, but when people harm God's property, it makes me, it makes me lose it. Cause I feel that children are very, um, children are a gift from the Lord. And so when you do things to purposely lead them astray, cause that's what they did was purposely lead the girl astray. It really upset me. It really, really upset me. It hurt me that they would hurt the child in order to hurt me. And I wasn't hurt by them. I was simply disappointed in the fact that they took God for granted. And so I, you know, I, I maintained my peace, but I also let them know you ain't never got to worry about baby again. Sister girl will be 18 when she turns 18. And until then, you're just not going to see her. If she wants to go see you after that, that's her prerogative because the girl was 18. But it just, I drew a line in the sand and I wanted to, you know, articulate how at the same time it felt really really good at the same time it felt really really uh vindicating for me I know that I did not do that in my own strength they helped me do that this is a line in the sand that I should have drawn with these people a long time ago I knew already who they were when I first saw them when I first met them when they first had me taken off my Jesus hat and I never really took off my Jesus hat for them. I always maintained peace, equilibrium, balance, and joy with them. I just never spoke to them again. But before, when I never spoke to them, it was almost like an unspoken thing. You just don't talk to Ebony. I don't fuck with you. And don't call my phone. I, you, I don't mess with you. You don't mess with me. But this time, God said, you maintain your peace, but you let them know that at this point, there is no more Mr. Nice Guy. There is no more access to me. 
there's no more access through the child through me either. If you want to be with her, then you just wait until she turns of age. And if you want to get back into my good graces, then you ain't got to say nothing to me, but you got to, you got to confess your sins to God. And so I realized at that point that we are all spiritual beings on a journey to enlightenment. And especially like in the Bible, hold on, let me let these children walk past. But especially like in the Bible, there are so many different instances of like prophets, Jacob. There's so many instances of prophets like Joseph and people who were placed on this earth to make a difference in the world, who had these huge anointings on their life. There are so many instances in the Bible where they are taken into captivity. They're caught up in these karmic lessons and cycles caused by other people. You know, Joseph was sold into slavery by his brothers and uh, Joseph, you know, and, and there was these instances where you thought to yourself like well why won't joseph just fight back why won't he just you know why won't he just get his own self out of that situation and i began to realize well god is the reason that you're there god placed you in that situation god put you on that journey and uh, i remember when i first started talking to my child's father like all those years ago 18 years ago at this point i was 19 so 18 years ago at this point i was like i heard god say if you continue on, then this is going to be a very long lesson for you, but you will be victorious. And so I went into it anyway, because I felt that even though God was telling me that, I knew that I was supposed to go down that journey. I had actually broken up with my child's father before he trapped me with a baby, okay? Before he did all that, I'd actually broken up with him. I told him I didn't want to see him anymore because he just lied for no reason. And so I told him I didn't want to date him anymore. And then I turned up pregnant like the next week. And so it was clearly obvious that he was doing it to trap me or whatever because he just wasn't ready for the relationship to end. And uh, it's been like that for the last, again, like 18 years, him trying to use little weird things to trap me, him not showing up for his daughter, him not taking care of the child, him doing things that were just clearly and obviously um, negative, but they weren't negative to me because again, God got my back. My dad is, my own father was available to help me and my own family was available to help me. And just because he wasn't there didn't mean that my life wasn't going to be just as great as it was, as it turned out to be, that sort of thing. And, um, again, I always wore like a church hat with him, but I remember one time I did try to shoot his ass and I would have pulled that trigger, but I don't think the gun had bullets, whatever. Um, anyways, but I just, I say all this to say that there are certain situations and certain things in your life that are going to be a, a short lesson and certain things that are going to be like a longer lesson. And like I said, when I first saw my baby's dad, I broke up with him and then he was acting all sad and shit like that. So I decided... I decided to forgive him and continue on with the relationship. And then that's when he did the ultimate act of betrayal and rape me with, you know, getting me pregnant with the baby on purpose, having me drunk and having sex with my unconscious body like he's some type of ne necrophiliac. But I digress. And then now coming forward where he's trying to use this other relationship to upset me, you know, because again, you know, he didn't take my daughter to get a tattoo his sister did, you know, his sister and his, and his new wife did. And I asked my daughter today, and this is something that was, cause it's been on my heart. The bitch been living in my little mind rent free, my baby dad that is. And I was like, well, show me old girl's daughter. And I looked at her and she ain't got no tattoos. You know, she didn't go up there and take her daughter to sign up for no tattoos. And she ain't got a bunch of multiple different piercings in her ears. And she didn't do all those things for her own daughter. But my child's father is using her to annoy me, to get back at me, to possibly get back with me. And I'm just thinking to myself, like, you doing all that when all you got to do is repent and praise the Lord. And maybe just maybe you might get some pussy again, but not even then, because if you repent and praise the Lord, then you'll realize that we are on two different planets. I'm on Mars, baby, and you on Pluto, you real far away and you can't access me. And so again, I, I began to realize that Certain people, certain things just come into your life as huge, huge lessons of how to stick to your own guns and how to love yourself. If I could do it all over again, would I literally just leave him to his own devices and, and break up with him and never talk to him again? Yes. Yes, I would. But at the same time, I realized that what God had me doing at that point in time was showing me a much bigger lesson in what it meant to be forgiving and to find forgiveness. Okay. Because if I'd have forgave him all those years ago and 
you know, just forgiven the fact that he was a liar and took him at his face value, then again, I would have just walked away. But I forgave him. And, and my idea in my mind back then, forgiveness meant, okay, well, I forgive that one instance. And then I go back into relationship and I try to make it work. And then when you lie again, we'd go through the same process over and over and over again. And so it's honestly like doing the same thing over and over again, and expecting a different result. And I learned that from the women in my life that I grew up around. You know, my grandmother was a very forgiven person extraordinarily. But then when she died, I realized, oh, that's not what forgiveness means. I still love her. I'm glad that she taught me forgiveness in that type of way. But when someone has no redeeming qualities, then there's really no reason to keep going back and back and back. Eventually they will learn. I'm sure one day my baby's dad will learn what he did was, uh, you know, he'll learn the error in his ways. But at the same time, it's not up to me to to be a spectator. You know, growth is not a spectator sport. Growth for me means that I'm going to forgive and forget and just move on with my own life. You know, I'll pray that no one ever does this to, to their other children or just, you know, does something like that to them. You know, it takes away their ability to choose because that in itself is rape. And so, you know, it drove home a message for me and a point for me that he doesn't care about your consent. Nobody cares about your consent. He is the rapist you thought he was. But also at the same time, it showed me that the reason that he is this way is because he got people in his world and his life that are condoning his behavior. And so, like I said, I didn't just cut him off because I already knew who he was. That was okay. But when I saw who his sister was, when I saw who the woman that he chose to be in his, t keep in his life, when I saw who she was, that's when I began to say to myself, like, well, there's, you know, forgiveness for them would mean that I don't need to go back into communication with any of you. Like, who cares? Like, in the grand scheme of things, it does not matter. But also in this grand scheme of things, it does matter because it's your soul on the line. And so I decided in my own self not to get wrapped up in that drama or that trauma. And so before I close out of this, I want to say this. When I, when that happened with my daughter and I was over there and I was sitting around the table with these people and I was thinking to myself, like, if I use this bottle, I could crack his head open. I could, I could bust it down to the white meat. I could. And then I looked at everybody else and I was like, I could really, I could really shut this motherfucker down if I wanted to, because they don't really know me like that. You know, the old me that was timid and that was, that didn't have the power of the Lord in you. If I wanted to take the power of the Lord with me that moment and, and use it for bad, I could have used it for bad and I could have shut that motherfucker down and it really could have turned out bad. But then I thought about offset, not offset. I thought about take off in that moment. I thought about offset in the sense that I see offset on this journey of moving himself away from the negative ideologies of hip hop, you know, like even with offset and take off, you have this, uh, you know, offset began LARPing as Michael Jackson, you know, back when I was younger, people didn't listen to Michael Jackson if they were black and male because Michael Jackson was gay. He was too soft. No one really liked that type of, uh, you know, there was a, there was an issue or a stigma with that. And so, you know, when you really learn what it means to surrender to God, then you really mean, you really learn that it means that you're going to be at peace no matter what people are doing. You're going to be at peace. And I'm not just talking about offset. Like, let's get back to Jesus. You know, when Jesus was in front of Pontius Pilate and Herod, he didn't even, uh, he didn't even bother defending himself because they knew what was up. If they had God in them, then they knew. And if it was up to them to change their mind or to save his life, but Jesus wasn't going to fight for his life for nobody that was willing to accept a lie. And so that's how I felt in that moment. I was like, I'm not going to accept this lie. I choose not to accept this. I choose not to go back into this communication or this, this trauma with a bunch of people that refuse to see that they are the own problem, their own problem in their own lives. And I decided at that point that I moved myself out of that moment I took the higher road, I went home, <laughs> I stewed about it a little bit, I made a couple videos, and I decided to, in that moment, tie my Jesus hat on just a little bit tighter, because if God before you, nobody can be against you. At the end of the day, my daughter picked out the tattoo, she wanted the one that she got, so they signed off to get it, whatever. And I chose peace in that moment, knowing full well that God has the last word. And, you know, I pray that 
they find God, but I know that me praying that they find God is, is it means that they're going to go down the same journey that I went down and finding God is no easy task. Finding God, God is going to take you to task. God is going to call you out on, on your bad behavior. And so once again, I just kind of like sat there in that moment, knowing that they are in for the ride of their lives. And so that, 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 that made my heart smile, but also again, I just, I still pray for them. I still want to, I still want to honor God in that moment or in this moment, in every moment. So let God be the glory or to God be the glory by y'all.